Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing good. Today we've got a different sort of video. Now if you didn't know, Comic Con was on a few days ago in San Diego and Marvel released a ton of upcoming projects which I'm so excited for and I thought I'd rank my assignment of 18 to 1 in this video. Just as a secondary note, I'm going to be adding Armor Wars in here. It wasn't mentioned at Comic Con but they have said it's still going to happen. So I'm going to add that in there as well for my excitement list. And just know this is just purely live action upcoming projects. We're not having animated stuff like X-Men 97, I Am Groot, What If Season 2. This is just going to be pure live action Marvel projects that are coming up. Finally, let me know what your list is. Tell me what you're excited for. Tell me what you're not excited for. Tell me in the comments. Without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Coming in at number 18, Agatha Coven of Chaos. Now, Agatha was the villain in WandaVision, and while I think the actress playing her was great, I was never thinking to myself, I want her to have my, her own Disney Plus show. And this is really something that I'm not excited for at all. This just seems like it's going to be pointless filler to the MCU, unfortunately. As I say, I think the actress playing her was great, but I just don't think that there's going to be enough there to make a compelling series. And unfortunately, it means Kevin Feige has got to put so much focus into that and deviate his attention away from other projects which people are excited for, unfortunately. For me, this just seems like Disney wanting some more shows on their streaming service for Marvel fans. And unfortunately, I'm just not excited for it. And I don't think it's going to really make a massive impact to the MCU. Coming in at number 17, Ironheart. Now, Ironheart is a fairly new character in the Marvel series and comics. I don't know much about her, but she's going to be played by Dominic Thorne. She's going to be introduced in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which is where she's really going to make her impact. Because I'm not really excited for this, mostly because I don't really know much about the character. All I really know is, is that she's a fan of Iron Man, she looks up to Tony Stark. That's all I really know about her, really. So, she's got to impress me in Wakanda Forever. If she does that, then it's good. this is going to be higher up on the list. But for now, I don't know much about the character it doesn't seem like she should be that interesting to me but when i see it and when i see wakanda forever and how she is in that then i'll probably change my position on this list of this coming in at number 16 she hulk attorney at law now, this is going to be the newest release coming up in august uh, it's, she's going to be played by tatiana marzlady she hulk and there's going to be a bunch of cameos, bunch of villains, including Charlie Cox's Daredevil, which I'm so excited for. Tim Boss, Abomination, is going to be coming back after his debut in The Incredible Hulk all those years ago. So excited for, even though I'm not a fan of that film. But for me, the first trailer just did not win it for me. The first trailer, the CGI looked awful. It has been fixed and it does look a lot better now. But there was all these like butt jokes which just did not fit the tonal for me. Second trailer came out. It improved my excitement. If it wasn't for that, this would probably be down a couple of spots. But thanks to that second trailer, it did kind of win me over more a little bit. But I'm still not fully convinced. Nine episodes is good, but I don't see how we could take this character to nine episodes. But we'll see. I'll probably be wrong. We'll just have to see how it goes. Coming in at number 15, the Marvels, Captain Marvel 2, whatever you want to call it. Brie Larson is back along with Iman Vellani as Miss Marvel, which I'm super excited for because I really liked her in the Miss Marvel series. That's kind of won me over and made me a little bit more excited for this film. Fortunately, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel isn't amazing. She tries, she does a good job for what she needs to do, but she doesn't really take it to a new level for me. I'm not the biggest fan of Captain Marvel, the, the first film. She's been very underused in the MCU recently, so I'm kind of interested to see where this film goes, but, you know, we'll have to see. Miss Marvel introduced us to something uh, with it, which I'm excited to see where it goes, but for me, I'm not really a big fan of Brie Larson's Captain Marvel, but there's two other characters there, Monica Rambo's in this as well. We'll see how they all bounce off each other and see if they can some cute banter. And see what happens. See if this leads into like big projects like Secret Invasion. But we'll have to see. But for now, not really excited. I don't know much about the plot. Not really a fan of a couple of the characters. But we'll have to see what happens. Coming in at number 14, Echo. Alacricots comes back as Echo. Introduced in the Hawkeye series. 
She was excellent in that. I thought she was brilliant. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what she does in this show. We've also confirmed Charlie Cox is coming back as Daredevil, which I'm super excited for. But for me, you know, I, I'd have heard Vincent D'Onofrio is coming back as Kingpin, which is great because I love him as Kingpin in the Daredevil show. But for me, I'd, we don't know much about the plot, really. Uh, we have seen a few set photos, but for me, I don't know what they're going to do with the story, uh, really. I don't know where they can take this character more now. But we'll have to see when the time comes. As I said, this is just excitement. We don't know much about it yet. I don't really know who's writing or directing the show. But we'll have to see. But for me, it doesn't seem like there's going to be much, much substance there to make a really brilliant show. But we'll have to see in the future. Coming in at number 13, Thunderbolts. The Marvel equivalent of Suicide Squad. Now, we, again, this has just been newly announced. We don't know much about who's going to be in it, who's directing it, what the story is. And that's why it's very low on this list. Once some more stuff gets announced, then maybe this will get higher on the list. There has been rumours that Florence Pugh as Yelena is going to be coming back and Baron Zemo is going to be back. We don't know. We don't really know yet. As soon as some cast gets it out, as some writers and directors, maybe this will get higher on the list. But I'd like to see a Marvel version of Suicide Squad. I just pray it's not like the first Suicide Squad film that we got. More like the second one by James Gunn. We'll have to see, really. But, of course, I am fairly excited for this uh, for this film. Just want to know who's going to be involved in it first before I can put it any higher on my list. This one may surprise a few people, but at number 12, I'm going to put Captain America New World Order. Now, first off, I like Anthony Mackie as Falcon. I think he's great. The problem why this film is not high on my list is because of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. For me, this is the worst um, uh, Phase 4 project that we had. I did not like it at all. Uh, for me, it was very stale, very boring. The villains are some of the worst villains we've had in the MCU. So that's why this film is very low on my list. But I am kind of intrigued to see where we go with this because... I love the characters. I love Sam Wilson. I've heard Bucky Barnes is going to be in it. So already a little bit of excitement there. But again, it's just been announced. We don't know much about the plot, who's writing it really. So we'll just have to see where it goes. But for me, Falcon and Winter Soldier really killed a lot of the excitement for this because of how trash it was for me. But as I said, we'll see at the time. We'll see where it goes. Coming at number 11, Blade. Mahashala Ali takes over the reins from Wesley Snipes as the famous vampire slayer Blade. Now, the first two Blade films I love, Trinity, we can just wipe that from existence for all I care. But I'm actually very excited to see where Ali takes this character. Now, Wesley Snipes is iconic as Blade. I think he's excellent. But I'm excited to see where he goes with this. Kit Harrington is also back from Eternals, so we'll see what he does in this film. But I'm actually really excited to see where this film goes. But for me, I think it's just going to lose a bit of its charm without Wesley Snipes there. But I'm willing to give the new actor a chance, see how he goes with it. I'm sure he'd be great, but for me, Wesley Snipes is high up there for me. But as I said, I'll give him a chance. But again, we don't know much about the story, really. We don't know what's going to happen. So there's not really too much to get fully excited in at the minute. I said this is going to be on this list. Armor Wars is at number 10. I'm quite excited for this show. Don Chino as War Machine is going to be back. I'm very excited for that because he's great and I love him in the role. So we'll see where they take this. Again, we don't know much because nothing really was announced at Comic Con. All we know really is that Don Chino is going to be back really. I don't know who's writing it. I don't know who's directing it. But we'll have to see where this goes. But still, I'm kind of excited for it. I like to, the fact that Iron Man's uh, suits will go against things and that'll be a great concept so we'll see where they take it in this Disney Plus show but for me we don't know much it would have been higher if we did know more about the plot who's writing who's directing it and more actors that are going to be in it coming in at number nine secret invasion the scrolls are going to be taking over the earth Emily Clark Samuel Jackson Ben Mendelsohn are all returning to the MCU in this Disney Plus show which I'm super excited for. I like the concept of the Skulls trying to invade the Earth. It was hinted in stuff like WandaVision, Spider-Man Far From Home. Really excited to see all this stuff. It's also going to be written by Kyle Bradstreet. If you don't know him, he wrote the show Mr. Robot. 
which I think is an excellent show. It's near enough perfect, that show, to me. So I'm really excited to see what he does with this show. I think this show is going to be fantastic. I'm really excited for it. Only reason it's not really high up on the list because, like, I have heard it has, like, a vast amount of reshoots. Now, first say reshoots aren't really a bad thing. Lord of the Rings films went through it, and they're, like, the, the perfect trilogy to me. For me, it just seems like it's had a few too much, a few time delays. It's had to be pushed back a bit. But I'm still super excited to see where this goes. Coming in at number eight, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, for me, I'm still excited for this show. But this film has been plagued by problems. The sad passing of Chadwick Boseman, the COVID pandemic, some of the actors not allowed to go to different countries because they've not been vaccinated. It's been plagued with so many problems. But I'm still really excited. The trailer was beautiful. The trailer was one of the best Marvel trailers ever. Didn't re reveal much plot-wise. All it really revealed was that the whole family's dead and that a little tease of Ironheart's going to be in it. So that's really won be over. Without that trailer, this would have been lower on the list. But thanks to the trailer, it's won me over. And I'm actually more excited for this film now. Tenet Cruerta is going to be playing Namor, the Submariner as well. A.K.A. the Marvel version of Aquaman, which I'm very excited for. I think he's a great villain. I think he'll be excellent in this. I hope he's really good. So, my excitement levels are still high. But because of all the problems that the film's been played with, it's just gone down the list a bit low for me. Coming in at number seven, Ant-Man and Wasp, Quantum Mania. Jonathan Majors is back as Kang the Conqueror. And Paul Wood is back as everyone's favourite superhero, Ant-Man. I am very excited to see where this goes. Ever since Jonathan Majors was introduced in Loki, I have been hooked to him. I think he was great. He won me over. I'm excited to see what they do with him. And they said that he's going to be the next big bad guy in the MCU now. So hopefully they expand on him and they expand on the other characters like Ant-Man, like Wasp. Very excited to see what they do. There's also been rumours that Jim Carrey might be in this. In fact, I think he might will be in this, which I'm... Um, Super happy for because I love Jim Carrey. I think he's great. I don't see why people hate him. So excited to see what they do with this film. Kang the Conqueror is going to be in it. Ant-Man's back. Wasp is back. They've got the writer from Rick and Morty uh, for this as well. Which, though I'm a quite a decent fan of Rick and Morty, does it really fit in the MCU to me? I mean, I know Ant-Man is more of a comedic character, so it may work, but just a bit nervous to see where his style fits into the MCU. But I'm willing to give it a chance. It is Ant-Man. He is a more comedic character in the MCU. So I'm going to try and trust my instincts with this. Just missing out on the top five at number six, Loki Season 2. Tom Hiddleston returns as everyone's favourite god of mischief, Loki. Everyone knows that he's great as the character. I'm excited to see him. Owen Wilson is back as Mobius. I think his banter with Loki was great in the first season. And it left on a really big cliffhanger, which I'm super excited to see where it goes. So... Everything looks really good here. Only problem is, where is it going to fit in the timeline? Because we've had so many films and series now after Loki, and none of them have really related to the series. Apart from maybe Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, Multiverse of Madness didn't really break the multiverse, to be honest. But I'm willing to see where they go with it. But I'm just thinking that the projects that we've had so far haven't really related to the first season of Loki where they broke time in the multiverse. But I wanted to see where they go with it because I love Tom Hiddleston. I love Owen Wilson. Jonathan Majors is going to be back as Kang. I wanted to see where it goes because Loki season one ended on a massive cliffhanger and I wanted to see where they evolve on that. So into the top five we go with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. What people are saying could be the final Guardians film some of our characters might be leaving us, unfortunately. Now, they were wasted in Thor Love and Thunder. That was one of the big flaws I did have with that film. But I'm wanting to see where they go. We have had some footage, you know, Rocket being captured. It looked really sad. It, apparently, it's going to be the very darkest film by James Gunn, which I'm super excited for. The first two Guardians films are brilliant. Guardians 1 is one of my favourite MCU films ever. So I wanted to see I don't, where this ends now. You know, it's going to be sad whoever dies. The only thing that's keeping it from going high up on the list is the fact that we're having this Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special later this year. And I think that's going to mix in with Volume 3. 
And, you know, there's going to be very strict time constraints on both of them. So that's the only bit of excitement that I'm a bit nervous about. But we'll see where it goes. I think uh, it will be good. I just think that the holiday special will mix it and make it harder for them to get it right for me. Into the top four, Fantastic Four. Now we've had four Fantastic Four films. How many times could I say four? All the previous Fantastic Four films have been trash. We had the unreleased one in the 90s. We had the two in the 2000s, which Rise of the Silver Surfer is easily the best one. Then we get to Fant Forced It, which is one of the most boring and very predictable and sluggish films I have ever had my eyes settle on. I just pray that Kevin Feige and Disney just make a great Fantastic Four film. We have had some news that it won't be an origin story, which thank the Lord is happening because we've had it four frigging times now. We know the origin now. So I'm just really excited to see. Only reason it's not high is because once again, we don't know the cast. We don't know if John Krasinski is going to be fan- Mr. Fantastic as he was in Multiverse of Madness. I would love him back because he was great. So I just want to see who's going to be writing and directing it really. But I just really hope that Marvel could just make a good Fantastic Four film. Coming in at number three, Daredevil Born Again. Daredevil was one of my all-time favourite TV shows. In fact, it still is. It's one of the best superhero shows ever in the last decade. Charlie Cox is excellent as Daredevil. I don't see anyone else that can play him. Ben Affleck was good, but for me, Charlie Cox is great as the character. I'm excited to see where this goes. The only reason it would have been just a little tiny bit higher on the list is because... The writers are not the same writers as the one when the Netflix series was on. We know that Disney and Marvel like to stick to PG-13 ratings. The show before that was an R rating. So unfortunately, I'm just worried that we're going to be dumbing down the violence, the realism. I hope that's not the case, but my excitement levels are still high. We're going to have 18 episodes of this. 18 episodes is a lot. I just hope they could fill it all in well and make a great story with this, because just please don't tarnish the reputation that the first three seasons did, because you made what I think is a perfect show, and just please don't blow it away now, because I really want this show to succeed, I want Charlie Cox to still be great as Daredevil, just please do not ruin it, Marvel and Disney. Coming in at number two is Avengers The Kang Dynasty, the Avengers are back. They're facing off against Kang the Conqueror. We've got the director of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings directing this. One of my favourite MCU films. It looks all good. We don't know the cast yet. We don't really know who's writing it really. All we really know is the director. We know he's not returning for Secret Wars, but, you know, we're going to have to see where this goes. I'm so excited. I wanted another Avengers film. I just hope this goes well, leading into number one, which of course is Avengers Secret Wars. When this was announced, my head just blown, because Secret Wars is one of the best Marvel comics ever to be. Secret Wars was emotional in the comics, and I just hope it holds this same emotion here. This will be a great end to Phase 6, if it is the end of Phase 6. I'm very excited to see where this goes in this uh, final film with the Avengers. Will they defeat Kang? We don't know. we are just got to see where this goes. But we don't know the cast, we don't know the directors, but still, just by the title, I'm excited for this film. Because one, I love the Avengers. I love the Secret Wars comic. Nostalgia and fanboy there mixes in well, makes me super excited. Please do not mess up this film and any other film and series in the MCU from now on. Guys, that is the end of the video. Tell me your opinions. Did you agree with this list? Did you disagree with it? What did you like? What didn't you like? Tell me. Next video, we're going to be reviewing Bullet Train. And then when I've done it, I'm on about halfway through season four of Stranger Things. And then hopefully note when it comes out. But guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you really all enjoyed. You all have a good day and I'll see you later. Bye bye.